Hey, Val. Hey, Al. Hey, Holly. Hey, Val. Hey, Al. Welcome to D Commentaries. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to you. Welcome to our listeners. And welcome to our very special guest, Holly Folger. Hi, you guys. Hi. Hi. (laughs) (laughs) Um, For those who may not be aware, Holly was Aunt Judy in all three Xenon films. Yep. And we're very excited to be speaking with her today. So, Holly, why don't you introduce yourself? Well, my name's Holly Folger, and I am an actress among other things. And I'm really excited to be here to talk to both of you about me. (laughs) We're so excited to talk about you too, (laughs) which is honestly a great change of pace because we talk about me way too much. And by we, I mean me. (laughs) I'd love to talk about you. (laughs) This just turns into an hour of talking about Al. Yeah, this just turns into Holly interviewing me. (laughs) Okay. I love that. Oh, you're so sweet. But I do have a speaking series on my website. I would love to interview you both. Can I do that? Of course. Absolutely. Okay. We would be honored. 100%. Okay, I right. also okay. saw that you interviewed. Okay, we'll get there. But I saw that you interviewed Anna Sitar and I'm like, oh, my oh, gosh. I know. She's, yeah, she's okay. famous. She's really famous. famous. Yes. Okay, yeah. Holly, you're famous too. So. Yeah. Oh, I know. I can't watch the screen. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Amazing. Okay. Let's, let's dive into the, so let's get started with your start. How did you start acting in the first place? Well, I honestly, very truly wanted to be a big famous model because I felt so ugly all my life. Uh, The word ugly is rough, but anyways, I, I did want to be a famous model and I think I found my way to acting kind of through that slightly sad uh, journey of, you know, never feeling great about me. But I just, I think when I was in college, I took an acting class and somebody, you know, dared me to audition for a play, which I did. In high school, the high school I went to only did musicals and I cannot sing or dance or do any of that. So I couldn't do any of it, you know, so it wasn't like I was going to be a Broadway star, but the ability to express myself and the ability to understand what that was all about was quite amazing and kind of a great journey. And it really kind of, for me, started in Chicago when I moved there to be a famous model and it didn't work out that way because I just would do these Sears like, you know, things for, I don't know, strange clothing. But so, (laughs) so I, I took acting classes and, um, and that's, it started for me there. And I started to, and I know that you two live there and there's a lot of small theaters there. And Mm -hmm. I just started, you know, studying at a theater that isn't there any longer called Wisdom Bridge Theater. And I studied with um, a coach named Edward K. Martin that a lot of individuals did back then. And then I just started to work. I started to work in the theater. And it was at a time in Chicago when casting directors were coming to Chicago to audition people. It was kind of a new thing then, because I know you have quite an industry there right now. But mm-hmm. um, do. but but then it was just kind of starting. And it was when Steppenwolf was, I think they said they were kind of, I think they were on Broadway by that point. But it was that time. It was like this interesting, really cool renaissance with these people, these actors like Alan Ruck and Aidan Quinn and... I mean, of course, there's the Steppenwolf gang, you know, Lori Metcalf and John Malkovich, but Amy Morton was in, we were in a theater company together. So it was, that's, you know, I got my start like that. And, and then it led to television and, um, you know, film and things like that. So. I I want to talk about that leap, but I, real quick, I noticed that you were from Lakewood, Ohio, and I just had to say that both of my grandparents are from Lakewood, Ohio. They are not. And I just what? thought that was the smallest world thing. Yeah, they grew up there. They went to high school there. They met in high school. Uh, yeah, my grandma went to uh, Case Western. So really, yeah. mm-hmm. wow. Yeah, that's a small worldy kind of thing. I know. Very yeah. small world. So yeah. I just wanted to to point that out because I thought that was really thank cool. you. 
Yeah. Wow. Um, so how did the, cause you were doing mostly plays when you were in Chicago, right? Yes. And then yes. how did the leap to television happen? Did you move to LA or did, uh, they did you get started, an opportunity? They started to do shows here. Um, and I got cast, I first got cast in a show called Sable. Uh, th- th- this is a long time ago, but this was a show based on a book about a guy who writes children's books during the day and is a crime fighter at night. And I got cast in that. It was um, for, it was created by um, a guy named Gary Sherman, who went on to, um, I think he did one of the Poltergeist movies or something. But Gary oh. lives in Chicago, and, and I got cast in that. It was such a fun role. They only did like six episodes, but I did that. And then I, I don't know, I got another show called Jack and Mike, which um, was, you know, again, a short lived show with Shelly Hack and a guy named Tom Mason, who's a really good actor. And then I just started, I don't know, I just started to work in TV and I went out to LA to try my luck and I got a series. It just, it, I was really lucky in the right place at the right time was was that anything but love is that the one it was anything yeah but love. And isn't it so cool that jamie lee curtis who was the star of that show is just yeah. like you know is just doing an academy thing. award winner yeah i know it was so <laughs> thrilling we were screaming <laughs> do you keep in touch with her i do uh, not you know loads like not hanging out constantly but yeah I was so excited for her. And um, yes, we were, I was just like, oh, my God, are you kidding yeah. me? And yeah, That's so cool. It's funny. That show was supposed to be set in Chicago, right? But you filmed in L.A. Yeah. And when I got that show, all these people were like, I love your accent. You're you're such a good actor. And, you know, I was like, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> just accept it. <laughs> I think that it's funny because outside of Chicago, people are like, we don't have an accent. What are you talking about? And then you go anywhere else and you're like, oh, no, I have an accent. <laughs> I didn't think I had an accent, but they did. So. And then after Anything But Love, you were on Ellen, right? Yes. After Anything But Love, then I was on Ellen for um, a season. I think it was a season. And then that kind of um, they retooled that show. Mm-hmm. And, um, was it the first season that you were on yeah it was called okay i got on that uh, that show was initially called these friends of mine and it was a show and it was kind of right when friends was starting and i remember oh. it was real interesting you know how like sometimes in the zeitgeist there's the, in the consciousness things kind of similar things kind of come into being and it was one of those things where we premiered i think Seinfeld was our lead in. I can't remember something like that. And um, we did great. We did really well, but there was a lot going on with that show. And uh, it just, it was kind of, it was a difficult show to do, but it was right around the time of of friends. And, um, and it was four of us. There was me, Ellen, Ari Gross and Maggie Wheeler Mm. who were the the chosen to do the show. And then it, I don't know, just kind of changed. I think I find it interesting, though, that you went from like, I love the sitcom format because it's like a mini play every time because Mm -hmm. you're learning the blocking and you're cheating out. And so I love that your storyline is like from plays and stage acting into sitcoms into bigger things. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And it is like theater, sort of. You know, it is, though. It is because it's in front of an audience. And I mean, you can retake forever so you can't really <laughs> but um but it is like theater and that you do have that audience and and you know it is that thing when you're doing a play that energy you get from the audience is um you know that's that's part of it that's part of the whole experience of acting in the theater and also on sitcoms yeah that's wow. neat i didn't even think about that honestly it's, I don't, a, it's the whole reason why I want to be on a sitcom. I'm like, don't give me, multi, <laughs> what is it, multi-cam or single cam? Yeah, multi-cam. multi-cam. Multi-cam, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's just dive into Xenon. How how did that kind of come about? Was it just you got an audition and it I just happened? I got an audition um, and I went in and I remember uh, Suzanne DePass and Suzanne Costin produced that. And then it was with, through Disney, but it was, um, and I don't know if you know anything about them, but Suzanne DePass 
is a pretty cool um, producer. She's um, a woman of color and she's um, kind of done some pretty amazing things, you know, within the construct of, you know, being a business that's uh, was, you know, so male dominated when she, you know, when she started and, and it was based, Xenon was based on a kid's book about a girl, little girl who goes into space. And Mm -hmm. I remember I auditioned for Aunt Judy and, um, and then they kept having me come back for this, for, for it, you know, they were kind of thinking about things and rethinking things. And then, and I got it and it was, I had absolutely no idea that Xenon would be the one thing that like to this day, people, <laughs> it's so hilarious. I went to, I went to do a workshop with my nonprofit in New Jersey in February and I met, it was so fun because this woman who facilitated it loved Xenon. She, you know, she was, she's your age and they, when they find out I'm Aunt Judy, people are, it's, it's just, I had no clue that that would ever happen, <laughs> but it was so fun to do. And we traveled yeah. everywhere doing those movies. And it was just, it was a time that I, I can't, you know, and I think back, it was just fun. It was just fun because just things that I remember distinctly at one time, I was supposed, it was Xenon 3, and I was supposed to be in the a spaceship with Commander Plank. My, that, my, he was then my husband, I think. <laughs> and we, were, we were supposed to be experiencing turbulence. Um, and, you know, we're like, it's so funny. Or you, they have these guys on either side, like, trying to make it go like this. Or I remember I was like... I was like, Stu, look, and I was doing this with the seats and I broke the seat and it was, we had to, and it just, it was stuff like that, that, that you try, it just was fun. And you, and it's just, it was fun doing it. And, and it's, and there was a sweetness to it, you know, and, and you felt that when you did the, when you did those movies, it was just like, it was one of my favorite jobs. Oh, it was yeah. really fun. Yeah. It's really cool. We did recently watch Z3, and I think we both know exactly the scene that you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> a cow comes in or some kind of thing. Yeah, and you're like, yes. why is it snowing on the moon? <laughs> yes, it is. I broke that. It was so hilarious. I broke that seat because I was trying to make him laugh. Like, see, look. Look. Oh my God. It was a car seat that they had like put in this thing and we Uh, shot that in Cape Town, South Africa. And sometimes when you shoot in places like that, you know, things are different. They're not as streamlined in in some, Mm -hmm. you know, different places. And so that the, the spaceship that they had built, it was very difficult to get in and out of. It wasn't just like, Oh, here's the door. It was more like, okay, we have to unhook this, thing and and so it wasn't you know me breaking the seat was a, a huge drag for them <laughs> I, mean, I don't think they were happy with me or they thought it was funny at all so oh, no. <laughs> well we heard that that movie uh was supposed to be a theatrical release and then they decided against it so it was like a movie that was meant to have a much bigger budget basically than it actually did and that kind of affected I things think the whole time with xenon there was always this thing where they wanted it to be a series they wanted it to be this they wanted it to be that and then uh, you know i don't know they would wait and then something would happen or somebody wouldn't be available or but it was always kind of that it was always going to be something. And then it, you know, it just was what it was, but um, yes, none of those budgets were ever, you know, I don't know what, what it's like on some of those other shows, but, but it is like, you know, when the doors are supposed to automatically do this, when you go in on a, you're on a spaceship, you know, it's two guys on one end, like, yeah, I mean, th- those things to me are comical and kind of <laughs> darling. Yeah. <laughs> you right. know. For how for how futuristic it was supposed to be, it was very modern. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but they were really, I don't know, they were just such, they were just such fun shoots. And like I said, I mean, just we traveled to some cool places. Mm-hmm. Well, because um, Z3 was in South Africa, and then Val's yeah. going to remind me of the other two places where the other Xenon so, movies so filmed. I know that Z <clears throat> Xenon 2 was in New Zealand. Right. Okay. I don't remember where the first one was. Was it Vancouver. in LA? Oh, Vancouver. 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 I did yeah. think that, but I didn't want to say it out loud because I didn't want to be wrong. Yeah. Vancouver. <laughs> Trust your gut. Um, um, like, New Zealand was amazing. 
And I was there a long time. So it was, and and I was there, I'll tell you, Philip did not, Philip Reese did not do Z, Z, Z3, right. but he did the first two. And, and, you know, I haven't talked to him in a long time, but he's lovely. And we hung out so much on that shoot and we had so much fun. And, um, and we, you know, you're, you're all in the same hotel and it's New Zealand. It's far away. Mm-hmm. And he was just, we just had some spectacular times, seriously spectacular times. Um, we went to a farm show. I remember <laughs> because they have sheep there. Right. So you go, you go to, went to a farm show where you watch like the dog herd the sheep and then they, they shear a sheep and then they had a, I remember they had a, uh, milking, you know, cow milking thing. And <laughs> Philip was asked to go milk the cow. It's an audience. There's an audience there. And so he goes yeah. and milks this cow. It was so funny. He came back and he said, I, I-, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> really funny. Amazing. With each film, you had all those different experiences happening. And, and you had all those, like in New Zealand, all the guys did this New Zealand has this um, cave with uh, glow worms. Oh yeah. You know, and you can go down in the cave and float down in a, you know, one of those floaty ring things, whatever they're called. Floaty. Like ring an inner tube? tube. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Inner tube. Okay. Thanks. Um, <laughs> and I did not go because it seemed kind of, you know, you know how here things are very specifically and even then things happen, but like you're in an amusement park, it's very safe. That was like, okay, climb down this thing and then, <laughs> and then get in that inner tube. And I didn't go, but the guys went. So Stu went, Mander Plank went, uh-huh. and then Xenon's dad went, Rob. And then, um, oh gosh, I can't remember his uh, character name, um, but uh, John, oh, he's such a good actor. Anyways, they all went, they all floated down the glowworm cave. Um, which I didn't do, but, but anyway, so there's all those different things that you're doing with all these people and then you're shooting and then you're hanging out. That's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I remember we remarked on how much fun Philip seemed to be having in the movie, like as his character, especially in two, I thought. Um, so it's nice to know that he's like that always. Oh, he's darling. He's, I think he's (laughs) directing a lot now, but he, and acting, but he is, He's lovely. He is just one of my favorite people. He really is. He, he It was fun. Just so fun to hang out with him and, you know, travel around New Zealand together. It's, it's really I mean, cool. even you, it's so nice to know that you're a kind, wonderful person. <laughs> and it's like, it's, it's so nice to put the like, well, everyone loves her as Aunt Judy, that like you as Holly are also an incredible person. And it's also, it's mm-hmm. just really, I love when good people have good things happen to them. And it is so well deserved. You're wonderful. Thank you. And it's only yeah. been what twenty minutes. <laughs> no. Holly, anytime you need hyping up, I will hype you up. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'll call you. I'll call you later. Um. <laughs> well, kind of speaking of that, I you know I was wondering, like, did you feel like Aunt Judy was sort of fully developed from the script or did you get to kind of imbue her with anything? Like, how did that process kind of? Oh, I think I did. And I think that there were things that, you know, just the fact that Aunt Judy hated to fly. I hate to fly. I (laughs) hate to fly. And they got a big kick out of that because, you know, when we went to do all those movies, those trips were not Vancouver wasn't far, but South Africa and New Zealand. That's a long. Far. Yep. I've done those flights. They're long. <laughs> They're long. This was before 9-11. And in both those flights, I spent most of the flight in the cockpit with the <laughs> pilots. Because I didn't, I was so scared. And this was before, you know, all this yeah. you know, <laughs> stuff happened. And I would be so scared and they just you know, take me and I'd sit with, I'd sit with the pilots and, and they have that jump seat. I'm sure like now I'd be arrested, but, but then, (laughs) you know, it was just, it was so nice because I was so scared, but they got a big kick out of that. Whenever they'd always put stuff in about how I was scared uh, of flying or, um, I don't know. I can't even remember. Or I remember the car they chose for me was that little VW bug. Mm There's certain things that, um, or the costumes, you know, our costume designer was Mona May. Who's just incredible. Right. I mean, please. So Mona, (laughs) 
you know, you'd go to these, these fittings and there'd be Mona. Mona I interviewed on my, by the way. The, okay. The show. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, it, you know, just that, that level of creativity of her and those costumes and, um, you know. Yeah. And those girls, they were such cuties, right? <laughs> those little girls. Oh my God. They were so, when I first met Kirsten, she was, I think, 11 or 12. She's mm. a little nugget. So, yeah. You know, she, yeah. She was. But she had so much command of the character like, I know. right away. Like she knew exactly who that character was. And, you know, despite anything else going on in any of the three movies, it's really clear that she knows exactly who that person is and conveys that super clearly, which I always thought was really cool. Yeah. She's, yeah, she's wonderful. Wow. She is. Yeah. We've watched, I think at this point now, Val, what we've had 50 episodes. So like 48 or 49 movies. And I, I think yeah. the sequel is probably my top two, definitely yeah. my top one or two. I yeah. think the sequel is an incredible, I'm going to say so it good. film. <laughs> Thank you. It was so much fun to do. I think Manny Cotto directed that. Yes. Now Manny's gone on to like, I think he's he does a lot of like uh horror stuff because I know I can't remember. I'd have to look look him up, but um Val's on it. She's quick with that stuff. Yeah, he did American horror story. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's done a couple things that are like horror. Yeah, yeah. The Exorcist. Yeah. Yeah. A different direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very different. <laughs> we see that actually a decent amount on these movies. And I think it's so cool when someone who is not like that's not their like usual gig gets to direct or even write one of these movies because it brings a different approach, a different perspective, uh, which is really fun. Like we just watched uh, Now You See It, which is a, like about a reality show about mag magicians and the person who got the final writing credit is was a reality tv producer he's this is like never written anything else ever so i just thought that was really interesting that like you know he did enough to the script to have that like final credit and he's not even a screenwriter oh, that's <laughs> just, so cool. you know? yeah like i don't know i think that stuff's really interesting wow Al, do you have yeah. any other questions? Uh, I have so many. Is, are we specifically regarding <laughs> um, decoms? <laughs> we can move on if you want, whatever, whatever you're feeling. Holly, do you have any final thoughts about Disney Channel, decoms, Xenon? Um, I, like I said, it was an absolute blast to do those movies. It just was such a wonderful thing. And to be able to impact one time I did get mobbed by 12 year olds and it was my kids at the time were probably I don't know they were in you know elementary school and we went to a picnic for you know it was at the end of the year and we were at this huge park in LA and we were going into our designated area and we walked past these group of 12 year old volleyball players and one of them was like What's up? <laughs> and I got mobbed. Now my kids are like, what? Seriously. My kids were just sort of never all that, you know, like, wow. But um, it was, it was, it was remarkable to me that it had that kind of an impact and that, um, it, and it did on girls. And I loved that. You know, I loved that because, and again, the, the, the thing with Suzanne DePass and, you know, th her uh, producing this, she cares about what she produces and she wants to present things that are empowering. And that piece of it was really cool. And I loved that. And I yeah. loved that there were girls doing stuff. Right. And then mm -hmm. saving the planet. That was just cool. And I love that kids, you know, people still like it. That's that's remarkable to me. Mm -hmm. So I loved doing it. And I loved meeting all those people. And I would have never met you two had I not done it. That's not true. <laughs> Which is really the most important. Yeah, part. we're the most <laughs> important part of all of this. <laughs> I know. Um, it's so true, though. I, you can definitely tell that as a producer, she cared. Because we've watched some of these movies. And you can tell when they don't <laughs> care. And it's yeah. so great to know that this thing, just like you said, that all of these girls looked up to, that we looked up to, is mm -hmm. is the value that was put in, is the value that it's getting out. And that's just so truthful of like, you put in a hundred, you're going to get a hundred. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we did. And we love those movies. It's so funny. I just heard from Suzanne Costin today. I haven't talked to her in a while. And I just, she just texted me today. It's, I can't wait to text her back because, <laughs> because she, you know, we used to, and there was always, oh, they're going to do a remake or they're going to do a reboot. I mean, that was, I haven't heard that rumor for a while, but there was always that, you know, yeah. like. I wouldn't be surprised if that rumor comes back around with yeah, them. They, they just, just did, they just did under wraps what, yeah. one and two. So I wouldn't be surprised if they dig it in deeper with other decoms. Yeah. It'd be so sure. fun. All right. Let's all manifest that right now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> We're manifesting. <laughs> Well, let's talk about your uh, nonprofit. I have a nonprofit called True Beauty Discovery that I started um, inspired, frankly, by my daughter, who, uh, I, like I said, me, the famous model story and, you know, that whole deal with with me. One of the things growing up, it was always a deal with, with uh, how I looked versus being an actor. It just, it, it was always something that, was part of the equation. And I, I think it was disempowering to me, but when I saw my daughter go through some of the same stuff that I went through about my looks you know, my daughter, who's perfect and stunning and, you know, everything. And, and to see her experience that it just, it was shocking to me because you think, well, no, we're more advanced now. Are we, that was, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to start this nonprofit was, was to was to see if I could make a difference. And so we do we have a couple initiatives. We have our workshop initiative and we're doing workshops all over the country. We have a speaking series initiative that where we interview different individuals who are real life role models for, you know, people to look up to and we have a docu series that we're developing and working on. So um those things th- that's that's where I've been putting a lot of my energies lately is the nonprofit. And the other thing that I'm really excited about is when I lived in Chicago, we were all in different theater companies and there was an actor in a theater company, Paul Racy, who was nominated for an Academy Award a couple of years ago for a movie called the sound of metal, which is incredible. Mm-hmm. He's incredible. And in he is this, he's an incredible actor. I've known him for years And it was one of those things when he got nominated, you know, you talk about nice people. And when, when, when Paul got nominated, we love all of us who are friends with him, love him so much that it was just, it was absolutely a fun ride to watch him and Liz, his wife at the, at the awards and, you know, be like texting Liz, what are you wearing? (laughs) It just was so much fun. And and um, the other day, well, not the other day, but a couple of months ago, I was watching the Golden Globes and I'm, you know, and then I'm just sort of laying in my bed thinking, I really want to be an actor again. What can I, what should I do? How can I do this? And I started to think, you know, maybe I should develop a script. Who would I want to work with? And I thought about Paul. So I reached out and I said, would you be into, if, if I, if I, I have a friend in Chicago, her name is Elsie Bernadine, who is a playwright. I reached out to LC and I said, would you work with me on this, uh, on a script for Paul? So we're developing a script. Wow. wow. I know. I'm, I'm thrilled. So um, <laughs> th- it just, we'll see, but it's That's one of those. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. Are we allowed to know what it's about or is it still kind of. Unlapsed? I'll just say the working title is called the linoleum club. Whoa. Oh, okay. okay. I'm intrigued. And that, and then I'll tell you later. When I'm not being recorded, what it's <laughs> okay. When I am being YouTube. Great. Sure, sure. <laughs> Allie Ring, five foot ten, Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Well, okay. So going into I, I know we only have a few minutes left, but going into true beauty discovery, it is an incredible initiative where you you want to empower women and women identify uh, how do, how do I say that? I'm blanking on my words. Yeah. Women identifying people, femme. Yeah. Like I think you okay, kind of list them all. They, thank you, Val. Um, mm-hmm. So what are some ways, because I am currently struggling with this, that you practice self-love? Uh, well, that's a tough one, right? I mean, it's not like it, it's culturally embedded, you know, in our um, in our daily life. I think for me, it. It, mine was a journey, quite honestly. I mean, mine was a journey of self-acceptance. And 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 I think 
a lot of that comes with age, you know? So I would say for both of you, I mean, I just think that one of the things that we do with True Beauty is, is it's about how your individuality is what makes you beautiful. And I look at you both and I look at those beautiful faces and I look at your gorgeous souls like sort of radiating. There is absolutely not one human being like you in the whole world. And you're just extraordinary in getting that and, and starting to understand that there, that's, that's something really extraordinary. I don't think we think about it that much or we give it that much credit, but who you are to make a difference in the world and to, and to impact people and to make the world better just by being you. Wow. So I don't know if that answered your question. No, I just but think- it did, Holly, it did. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but to your point, you're like, you know, this has been a journey for you. There's not going to be like one thing where you're like, every day I write down one thing about myself, you know, like it doesn't, that's not what self- love. I mean, that can help, but it's not going to, you know, get you to a place where every day you're like, I'm incredible and I'm wonderful. And Val and I have recently had this conversation, like the last couple of months for me, I've just been really struggling, um, with exactly what you're talking about is I'm, I'm falling back into forgetting that I am capable and I am strong. And so I feel like you coming into my life at this <laughs> point in time is, is part of my storyline, really. Like I really needed this of looking through your website over the last week and taking the quiz and figuring out that I'm a trailblazer. And, I love that. <laughs> you know, like, I feel like I really needed this in this moment in time. Like, this is what I've been searching for of a reminder that I am worth it. it, it so worth it, beyond worth it. Extraordinary. Beyond measure. Okay, so Holly, when I need hyping, I'm gonna call you. Oh, you, you just call me. Okay. You might call you. Just call me. Great. I just call, me. call me. Text me. Uh, really, or we could Facetime. Okay. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm so I'm so glad. Yeah. Oh, I. So now I feel like you're my best friend. Great. Oh. <laughs> Us too. You're our best friend. You're the third host now of the yeah. <laughs> Al Valen, Al. <laughs> That's perfect. I love perfect. it. We're so thankful that you took the time, you know, out of your busy schedule to talk to us. We oh, really I appreciate it. it. I oh loved my it. Gosh. Hey, and if I'm ever in Chicago, I'm supposed to be there in May, but I can't make it in May because I have to do a workshop. But we're we're going to hang out. Oh, we're yeah. hanging out. We're hanging out. It's on my calendar. <laughs> We're going to hang out and I, I'll get there this year. I promise I will. Cause I've got so many friends there, but I'll get there this year. Oh my gosh. And thank you so much again, Holly. We appreciate you and your time so much. It has been a joy to talk to you. Yeah. Um, and that's me speaking for me and Val. Okay. <laughs> You're she, both she lovely. speaks for me always. You really are. <laughs> but keep in touch. Yes, absolutely. We will. We will for sure. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye. That was like the coolest conversation we could have, po- I, I couldn't have imagined a nicer person or a conversation. Oh my gosh. What a sweet, she is a dream come true. What a lovely person who is now our best friend. <laughs> She's our best friend. We're getting <laughs> drinks, coffee. We're having a slumber party whenever she comes to Chicago. <laughs> it's so cool to meet someone who is like, who's had like a good amount of success, you know, is has yeah. what I would consider famous, yes. like knows a lot of very famous people Mm -hmm. and is so down to earth and cool and nice and kind and generous. Like what a, we've, we've really hit the jackpot between Stu and Holly, man. I can't believe how lucky we've been with the people that we've talked to. Maybe it's just decoms. Decoms are full of amazing people. They really are. Anything else to cover Val? Well, just, uh, that next week we're Back to our regularly scheduled programming, and we're watching and talking about Buffalo Dreams. Mm-hmm, we sure are. Val, when is our special Patreon episode premiering? Is it in April or is it in May? I would say May, just to be safe. Okay. It's soon. Okay, cool. So we have a very special Patreon project for you all to be very excited <laughs> for. So if you yes. haven't subscribed to our Patreon, Patreon.com slash the Trident Network. 
And you get more than just access to that episode. You you will also get access to any other Patreon only content from any of our other you know creators, any of the other podcasts or shows. Um, on Trident, you will also get access to our Discord. Um, depending on your level, you might also get some stickies Whoa. and some other stuff. So um, you might get your name on our website. Whoa. Um, so, yeah, you could be famous, too, if yeah. you just give a few dollars a month. All right, Val, you going to go? Yeah. We got some really fun reviews recently, so thank you to those of you who left us some nice five-star reviews. One of them I think I'm going to frame. Uh, so, <laughs> Basically, thank you to the person, and I'm not, I'm not saying this sarcastically. I'm saying this genuinely. No. For the person who gave us a five-star review and said, just okay. End of review. <laughs> and I am so grateful for you and your honesty that... Yeah. That's all we need. And, and here's the thing. You gave us five stars, which is really all that matters. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you. We also think that you are just, just okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. But we also got a, another very nice five star review as well. We appreciate those of you who have already left reviews. If you haven't, please do. It really does help other people find the podcast. Yay. I love you, Val. I love you, Al. Bye, Val. Bye, Al. This podcast was produced by me. And me. And it was edited by me. The music was composed by Michael McNally. You can find us online at thetridentnetwork.com slash dcommentaries hyphen pod. And you can find us on Instagram and TikTok at dcommentaries. Dcommentaries is a part of the Trident Network. To learn more about our videos, live shows, and other podcasts, please visit thetridentnetwork.com. Disney Channel Original Movies. Damn it, Allie.